everybody welcome back to the channel i've got a pile of parts and pieces laid out in front of me right here don't worry it'll all make sense here in just a minute so i'm gonna do you a little little cool little project today so just showing you what i'm gonna start with and i'll show what i end up with so i've got a plano little 30 cal ammo box i've got some female connectors right there i've got a little 150 watt inverter star of the show the xmy 12 volt battery it's going to give us the power for this project little T-Tocus breaker, some Kori uh, DC accessories, some heat shrink connectors, of course a bag of tools, uh, various heat shrink, got some silicone wire, 200 degree jacket, 10 gauge wire, extra connectors, Anderson connectors, all kinds of fun stuff. I have links to all this in the video if you want to copy and build your own little project. Like I said, you'll need some tools, you know, you'll need a drill, uh, some hole saws or step bits, things like that. Just regular electricians, hand tools, stuff like that to build this little project. So if you got the tools, you know, the actual parts aren't that bad. I'll have a total tally of what it costs to build this project in the video. So lay out your box first and do it the way you want. This is the way I'm going to do it. Got all my holes marked out with everything lined up, measured. So made room for the battery in there. I'll show you all this in just a minute too, but... Went ahead and marked out where everything's going to go, the layout, before I drill my holes. Measure twice and cut once. Uh, it's, uh, it's hard to patch that plastic back in if you mess up. And an inch and an eighth hole saw is perfect for these openings, for all the little DC ports and stuff. Fits perfectly, so inch and an eighth. Or if you're using a step bit, get an inch and an eighth step bit. Alright, so get all your holes cut out, clean up the burrs and the edges on them. Like I said, put them, put your accessories wherever you want, arrange them in your own order. This is my arrangement. Do it the way you want. And there's the completed Anderson inputs and outputs power pole connectors. These are 45 amp rated. Always oversized and underutilized. Big wire, overrated connectors have less problems. And this Anderson power pole connector did not come with a gasket, but it was very cheap. 3D printed model. There are options with gaskets, but they're about $20 more. So I made my own gasket with polyurethane. So I just put some tape around it and then let it start setting up. And then you can peel the tape off and you got you a nice straight gasket spot right there on the side for no, no water to get in, just like that. I've got all the accessories and stuff installed on the box. I got a voltage meter right there. Got the main breaker and disconnect on the side, my Anderson power poles, USB port, my 12 volt socket right there. So now it is time to wire everything up. So here's all the wiring. It's all 10 gauge, 200 degree jacketed uh, silicone cable, way overkill for a little 15 amp breaker. So this is way oversized wire, which is the way I like it. I've got the Anderson power poles to quick connect to the battery so you can take the battery in and out, whatever you need to do with it if you need to use it somewhere else. And I used a battery cable butt splice and hydraulically crimped all the negatives together instead of using a terminal block and making another penetration in the box. So that's hydraulically crimped and that's double shrink wrap for the negative bus bar, if you will. So the positive comes in from the battery right here, goes to the little T-Tocus breaker, distributes off of the load side to all the accessories, the 12 volt uh, cigarette lighter plug port, the USB port and the Andersons, and high temperature terminals, uh, to make the doublers right here for the daisy chain so that's high temp heavy duty right there so just to give you an idea you can kind of set up your own way it'll vary depending on where you put your accessories you know if you're going to run a little harder than what i'm going to run you might want a different breaker all that so they're you know, just showing you giving you some ideas i'll put the xzny 18 amp hour battery which will give us 230 watt hours of energy little four pound battery so i've got the little xzny battery in there so just a little anderson power pole uh, connectors right here so that's the positive going to the breaker i've got the negative for the anderson right here this little plug that's just the way i already had the battery pre-wired with the anderson so i just continue the anderson put a little high temp piggyback right here on the battery positive side of course i use the breaker as a semi junction block to feed all the loads off the load side of the breaker so i had to make up for that spot i was missing here so use these little heavy duty high temp piggyback terminals on the battery so easy and i got these two long runner wires coming over here to the display so i'll hook up the display you can put the display in a different spot this is how i wanted it but see i got long leads going out to the display so the lid opens and closes without putting stress on the wire see battery's tucked in there it's snug it won't move it doesn't shake 
it's actually a little bit of a rascal to get back out once you smush it down in there. The plastic kind of just holds it in place. So no need for foam or anything like that. Uh, you can add more accessories, anything you want in there, add another port, put it your own way, however you like. Uh, this is just, just how I brainstormed it to start with. So this is version 1.0. Then close the lid. The wires just tuck down there nicely. Nice silicone wires. The lid closes. Snap it on there. There's our voltage meter right there. We got our main disconnect or our switch right here. The Anderson's right there. And then the USB in the front. And then the socket right here. Cigarette socket. 12 volt socket right there. So if you want to use it, you just come over here. Hit the switch. And there's your voltage display. 13.2 volts because I need to charge the battery. So everything's live now. The Andersons are live, so you can take power out from right there. You can take power out right here. It's got a nice little light in there. And then we got a USB for your phones and tablets, drones, whatever you're charging, and it turns on and off with the little push button, which is pretty cool. And as far as charging, how do you charge this? Well, you charge it through the Anderson ports right here. Well, XZNY battery is max of 20 amps. So I'd recommend charging it around five amps, something like that. You know, keep it down about a 0.25 C rate on the battery, but you can take these Anderson power pole connectors right here and, you know, hook this to your charger, make an adapter, whatever kind of charger you want to go to, and then just plug it into the side right there and it'll charge your battery. Then of course, to shut it off, you just hit the little breaker trip on the T-Tokus breaker that kills it all. Um, just, you know, just like the off button on your standard expensive power stations. This is just your, your on and off switch. Protection on and off in one simple motion. So that's our 12 volt portable power station. So you want 120 volts, right? You wanna be able to carry something lightweight, camping or whatever you're doing with and have 120 volt capabilities, right? Okay, I got you covered on that too. This is why I wired it and configured everything here the way I did. Check that out. Little 150 watt inverter sits right on top of the battery. The little wires just tuck in nicely around it. So you've got your little inverter inside the box to carry with you. So of course to utilize that, we just simply plug it into the front of the mini portable power station. And then we've got 120 volt capabilities. So just simple as, and this is a little Ampeak 150 watt. So just put it in our 12 volt port right there. See, it's got USBs on it too. So we got USBs all over the place. You got charge all kinds of stuff with this. So just plug the inverter into the front, powers up. Now we've got a 120 volt portable power station. So it wouldn't be weather resistant with the inverter on. I kind of designed this to be completely weather resistant if you've got it sealed up. Everything's gasketed and sealed. Um, so, you know, you can leave it out. It's not going to hurt anything, but the inverter, of course, would need to be stowed inside the box to protect it. So, yeah, you couldn't really use the inverter if it's raining, but the other stuff, yeah, you should be good to go in, in most weather conditions. So, just give you a little spin around look of it right here. So, see, just old Plano box right there, and now it's an affordable, uh, easy DIY portable power station. So, now you want to see it put some load to it, right? Oh, of course you do. All right, time for the load test. Got my Skeeter fan right here. This is what I built this box for. Instead of having to drag a big power station out, this fan pulls about 40 or 50 watts. So I'll run about three and a half hours or so on that considering the losses to the inverter. So for your nipping nevins, your five O's, your biting midges, whatever you want to call them, and mosquitoes and stuff like that. Oh yeah, that'll be great in the evening times. Carry it into the garden, keep the bugs off of you, stay nice and cool. So turn it on and power it up and check it out. All right, we powered up. Inverters should come on. Oh yeah, inverters on. Yes, very nice. Uh, let me go over and hit the fan. There we go. Ooh, oscillating too. Nice. Yeah, ain't no skeeters gonna, gonna stick around with that blowing on you. Very nice. That's just scratching the surface. There's all kinds of little things you could power with that little 150 watt inverter. Oh yeah, look at that. Nice. So I hope you enjoyed today's video. Hope this gives you some ideas, making a little affordable backup power solution. A little mini portable power station. So 
just very simple affordable little build and any questions on this please put in the comment section i will try to help you out the best i can uh, if you're not subscribed i'd greatly appreciate a description from you i uh, hope i earned a like from you on this one today that really helps the channel when y'all hit that like button really really does so thank y'all so much for watching until next time i bet her the grid don't go y'all have a nice day and be safe